Hey y'all, Tom here, ND3N, just like it says on the hat, and this is my little shack in the corner, and we're going to have a ham shack chat. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Worldwide Digi DX Contest, which happens at the end of August and goes from 1200 UTC on Saturday until 1159 UTC on the next day, Sunday. This makes it a 12 hour contest and you can operate the entire 12 hours. The objective of this contest is for amateurs around the world to contact as many other amateurs in as many maidenhead grid squares as possible using the FT4 and FT8 modes. You can use one, the other, or both. This contest will take place only on the non-work bands, meaning 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. The contest organizers have recommended that we do not use the standard FT4 and FT8 subbands, but rather use the ones I'm displaying right here. Uh, additionally, they are recommending that if a subband becomes crowded, which is likely to happen, Move your radio up in 3 kHz increments as needed. For example, if you're working on FT8 on the 40 meter band and you're sitting at 7.090 MHz and that sub band becomes overcrowded, move your radio to 7.039 or <laughs> 7.093 MHz, 3 kHz up and make your contacts there. Now I would recommend you adding these frequencies to the pull down frequency selection. If you're using WSJTX and if you don't know how to add frequencies, I recently put out a video right up there where I demonstrated how to add additional frequencies. I will put a link in the video description as well as provide a clickable link at the very end of this video after I say my goodbyes. This video also shows you how to put WSJTX in the contest mode and how to choose this specific contest. Give you a hint, you're looking for WWDigi. <laughs> That'll do it. I've also put a link to the full rules which I'm just summarizing here. If you have a question about what I've said in this video, first, please go to the rules and see if you can find your answers there. Things you learn on your own are always remembered. Things I tell you, well, if you're viewing this video in a year to do the contest again, you might have to put the same question down. Uh, now, if you didn't find it in the rules and just couldn't figure it out, then please, Ask it in the comment section. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Usually within a couple hours, certainly within 24 hours. Uh, the contest exchange is your four character grid square, uh, which is what you normally send during normal FT4 and FT8 contacts. You get one point per contact and one multiplier for each of the grid fields, which is the first uh, alphabetical characters in your grid square. Now, I said you get one point per contact. Actually, you can make more than one point per contact. You can work a station for points once for band on either FT4 or FT8, but not both. That's It's per band. You can work them on points for different bands. Now, the number of points per contact is one point for the Q-cell. Plus, you get some bonus points. You get one bonus point for every 3,000 miles or 3,000 kilometer difference between the QSO partners. Uh, the uh, distance is determined by the short path between the center of your four digit grid square and the other station's center of their four digit grid square. So, if that distance figures out to be 5,541 kilometers, you would get a point for the QSO and another point for the 3,000 mile kilometer distance. Now, if you went a little further and the distance was 6,001 kilometer, 
you would get two points because you did 3,000 and then another 3,000. Like points, multipliers can be earned once per band. So uh, if, uh, if you happen to work uh, Maryland at uh, FM 18, and then you work Maryland at FM 18 again, you only get the multiplier for FM 18 one time. Uh, your uh, final score is the sum of your QSO points across all bands multiplied by the sum of your two character grid fields uh, multiplied across all bands. For example, if you got a thousand QSO points and 70 grid field multipliers, your final score will be 70,000. Now, let's talk about the entry categories. Most of you will be doing this first one. The single operator is one person performing all the operator and logging functions. And you can only transmit on one band at a time. Now there is no limit to how many times you can change the bands and you can use any kind of spotting assistance. The single operator has three power levels. Uh, the first is uh, where your total power output must not exceed 1500 watts, full legal power. Uh, and that's called high power. The second is called low power, where your total output power must not exceed 100 watts. And finally, QRP, where your total output power must not exceed 5 watts. Uh, all of these uh, power levels are further broken down into whether you're working all the bands or single bands. Uh, additionally, you put all of this information in your Cabrillo file up in the header. You say, okay, I was a low power station or I was a high power station, I was a QRP station, I was a single band, I was an all band. Uh, you, 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 all of that goes in there. Uh, so that, that's, uh, that's, that's how they know. Uh, now, single band is self-explanatory. You pick a band and you work that band. If I had to recommend one, uh, since it's going to be from, uh, uh, let's see, noon, that's 8 o'clock in the morning uh, on East Coast time, overnight until one minute before 8 o'clock, uh, I, I would say you probably want to go all band, but if you pick a band, uh, I would say you maybe want to go 20, 20 meters, get get advantage of the most of the day and then into the night. Uh, but if uh, you want to go from uh, sunset to sunrise, uh, then maybe 40 meters. But that's up to you. This is, uh, you're, you're the operator, so you're the control operator, so you're in control. Uh, so if you happen to work a thousand contacts uh, or you earn a thousand points on a single band, and only on a hun uh, only a handful on another band, you can claim single band when you complete your Cabrillo file. But that includes all the contacts you made. You know, in your log, you have to your complete log needs to go in. But only the contacts you identified in that Cabrillo file as your single band operation uh, will count toward points and multipliers. Uh, this is a game you kind of got to play. Uh, figure out what other people are going to do and uh, you want to uh, lower your competition and maybe raise your uh, final final score or where you land on the final score. By the way, last, uh, last year I came in number two in the eighth call area. Yes, I have a three call, but I'm, uh, I'm living in Ohio. Now, the next entry category is for multi-operator stations. Any number of operators is allowed. You want to get 20 of your friends together and each of you work for a half hour? You can do it. Now, any number of op operators is allowed, as I said. Now, first is the multi-one, and that means multi-operator, one transmitter. Uh, so only one transmitted signal on one band is permitted at any given time and the transmitted signal may make a maximum of eight band changes per clock hour. So keep, keep your eye on that. That's from zero, zero minutes to 59 minutes. Uh, that's a clock hour. 
Uh, you can only change your band eight times. Now, that's pretty generous and you'd have to be pretty uh, anal to be switching bands that often. Uh, high power entries must not exceed 1500 watts on any band at any time. Low power entries, again, like the single operator, must not exceed 100 watts on any band at any time. There is no QRP entry for the multi one or any of the multi operator categories. Next we have multi two uh, for uh, multi operator two transmitters where a maximum of two transmitting signals on two different bands may be used at any time. Uh, now your log must include which transmitted signal made each Q cell. Uh, like the multi one, each transmitted signal may make a maximum of eight band changes in any clock hour. Uh, total upper power limit is not to exceed 1500 watts on any band at any time. There is no low power or QRP entry power category for the multi two. Finally is the multi unlimited category where the six context contest bands may be activated simultaneously or up to six. That's 160 through 10. Uh, your total output must not exceed 1500 watts on any band at any time. Uh, uh, and uh, obviously no low power, no QRP. Uh, you do need to have a separate log for each transmitter. Uh, now those are my high points for the Worldwide Digi DX Contest. I hope to see, see you on my waterfall and make a good contact with you. If I'm lucky, you'll be a new multiplier for me as well. Uh, these are only the high points and I think they're sufficient to get you started with this contest. However, I encourage you to read and follow the rules. Uh, again, the listing of the rules is down in the video. The link to the rules is down in the uh, video description. That's it for now. Thanks for dropping by my little shack in a corner uh, for a ham shack chat about the WW Digi DX contest. Now you could show me your appreciation for this video and maybe some of the others I've done by clicking on the thumbs up icon and giving me a like. Also, please share this with your friends who may enjoy and appreciate the content. Let me know how you did in the contest in the comments below. 7-3 for now. As always, I'm at your service. Tom, ND3N, and I'm out. Uh